How are we doing tonight, folks? Uh, this is different than my normal kind of content, but much more akin to uh, what, what my real life is usually typically like. Ordinarily, I'm on here uh, playing chess, but tonight I'm going to be doing Advent of Code. So I'm going to take a little bit of the time that we have right now to sort of talk about the, the setup that I have, as well as some of the resources that you might uh, see there. And then uh, at 9 p.m. Pacific time, or midnight uh, East Coast time, the problem number one is going to show up. And so basically every day, December 1st through December 25th, at midnight Eastern time, a new problem comes out. And uh, each problem has two parts. And you solve each of those parts to get uh, stars. And the goal is to get all 50 stars, which uh, shows up... Uh, basically going to light up a little drawing and there's also a little leaderboard etc etc speaking of i need to join that leaderboard private leaderboard and let's go over and let me see if this is the correct yeah view space details i've got a leaderboard from work and this does in fact seem to be the right one well if i go there and i view wonderful all right i'm on here like five times for reasons that are not entirely clear to me. I think they might have changed the way that they did logins. Anyways, neither here nor there. So we'll go back to, to here. Um, I should probably also sponsor Advent of Code. Anyways, on the left here, we're going to see the problem statements. And if we go back and look at uh, 2021, we can see a good example. Uh, you can see, oh, there's some problem. You know, they give you some stuff. They give you a little example down here that you can see. Um, and then uh, they ask you, oh, what's, what's something? And there's a little input text box. And so you get that problem right. And then they show you the second half of the problem where they slightly modify the problem. And then they ask you to submit another answer. And all of these answers are based on puzzle input, which they give you as a unique text file to, to you yourself as an individual. So usually you have to open that up uh, and download it in order to be able to parse it. So on the right here, which I'm going to expand into full screen, and hopefully this is big enough. We'll, we'll find out in post if I've got to explain all this later. Well, we might just start on day two. Um, but basically, I've got a little... Uh, Java um, thing. I run everything through main. Uh, this is this this project structure is not necessarily the greatest project structure in the world, but it's definitely one that makes me comfortable and easy. So I basically keep each level as its own class, and then I have dot part one and dot part two. Uh, if we go here, the first thing I do is open a file, which I use from uh, a little utility file I have here. So uh, file names are slightly different based upon the computer that I'm using. This is all in the GitHub. It doesn't really matter if you can see the structure of my uh, computer file system. I don't care about that. Um, and then you'll see, oh, I open a scanner to read that file and I'll read through and do some stuff, which there's nothing there. And typically I uh, end up doing something similar for part two. So why don't we just go ahead and get that set up as well? Wonderful. Uh, and, it, and it always reads like the same, you know, level one, level one, uh, reads the, like the level one data.txt, et cetera. And then if you look, uh, we did a sample problem earlier. So we put some stuff in here. Let's just control A and delete that. Uh, and then after the fact, we'll go through and we'll uh, put in a little MD file so that the GitHub reads well. Uh, if you look at last year's GitHub, which I'm sure I have a link for somewhere, you can see uh, what that looked like last time we did this. So uh, if we take a moment to... Um... Oh, it's the elevator music. <laughs> I'm using a YouTube like uh, attribution not required copyright free music so that I can listen to something while I do this, which is nice. It's great. I like doing that. But um, every once in a while, you get nerd sniped by music that you hear in a bunch of other YouTube videos. And this is one of those cases. Um, so uh, if we look here and we go and look at, for example, the leaderboards for 2021 or whatever, and I go to my personal stats, you know, it tells you what time you did, what your global rank is. You know, apparently there are about 250,000 people that did it. And then you get a score, but you only get a score if you end up in the top 100 people. Um, I do not expect, given the fact that I'm going to be streaming this, uh, that I'll be particularly fast. I enjoy being faster than some of my coworkers, but some of the first days, you know, it basically, uh, you have to solve the problem in like 45 seconds in order to get on the leaderboard. So I don't expect to do that. And on some of the later problems, I end up doing better because it goes from a couple hundred thousand people down to about 10,000 if, if it's anything like last year. And so I would expect that we'll, we're going to be in a, in a better position there. So if we go ahead and go back to advent of code. Uh, we can now see we got about six minutes left, so we're just gonna gonna chill out until that point of, uh, in time. Normally, um, actually, let me let me take a look here. Let me full screen this on my other screen and see whether or not any of this stuff is visible. Yeah, it seems it seems generally fine. And if I go over to this, yeah, if you're if you're watching on a cell phone, you know you're probably not gonna have a great time. What I would love to do is zoom this in one more tick. If I do that, IntelliJ is going to break. 
because you can you can make it so scrolling updates the uh so using control and then the scroll wheel on your mouse updates the zoom level if you do that and you check the setting that updates all of the tabs at once so for example if i want this to zoom and this to zoom at once if you check that setting when you do it uh with high probability uh your editor just freezes <laughs> which is no fun so uh this is nice, like, calm music, though. And let's go back over to uh, my Twitch dashboard here and do a little refresh. And given that we have a couple of uh, minutes here, let's go ahead and run a little thing so nobody that shows up has to watch any ads, which means just running a little ad break right now. Not my favorite thing to do in the world, but nice and prudent. This will obviously get cut out of the video. I better not say anything important right now. Oh, yeah, there we go. And now we're, we're stuck on the Huen viewer, which is just also me checking my levels is uh, stuck there. And I just have a bunch of random bot accounts that are always watching me. And I can tell they're uh, bot accounts because they all watch the same one live person and have a similar number of followers. It's, a, it's pretty disconcerting. I don't know whether there's like five or six of them. Some of them are like pretty old accounts, but most of them are uh, pretty obviously fake. Oh, and now that I'm thinking about it, just we've been in darkness this whole time, let me fix the lighting. Oh, that is so much better. Look at that. We can see my face in its glorious redness. In fact, that's probably not even bright enough. Let me turn that up just a little bit more so that the trouble is that we got a white background back here. So like the white balance is all bizarre. So I have to make myself pretty bright and that, but the, then I'm wearing black and the backpack's black, backpack's over there. Um, it's funny because I'm looking at the screen and my intuition is not to think, where's the real backpack in the room? My intuition is to think, um, just what which side of the screen does it feel like it's on? But that's not even my new backpack. I gotta put my new better backpack up there. Oh, oh look at how much nicer and squarer that backpack is. Full of stuff. Oh wow, and now all of a sudden we have four viewers. Um I assume most, if not all of them, are coworkers. Hello, fellow fellow coworkers. I hope you're doing well. Uh, if anybody in the chat can tell me whether or not this looks like a reasonable setup, whether or not you can see what's going on, uh, that would be appreciated. Um, but also, you know, no big deal. I'll figure it out. Um, <laughs> yes, Hippoism, you are indeed a co-worker. Tonight we're doing coding stuff. No Hey Dev, I think, is, is in fact actually a co-worker, because uh, I mentioned that I was going to be streaming stuff when people asked for the link in my work chat. Anyways, we're going to be doing Advent of Code, which I just explained hippoism, but we've got about three minutes, so I'll involve in it. And T-Stisk is here, too. Yay. Yeah. Can everybody, like, read this, though? Like, you can see the, like, file, 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 hover, dot, get file, etc. blah, blah, blah. Is that big enough? I think it is if you full screen, but if you're on a mobile device, you know, again, God help you. You're just going to have to listen to the sound of my voice. Okay, great. Oh, and Powered by People is here, too. Man, we got uh, quite the crew out here tonight. Um gonna be doing a little a little bit of coding it is interesting feel free to sign up it doesn't matter if you sign up on the first day or not um and you know if we start getting a little bit of traction i might set up a i think i use my personal leaderboard for my work leaderboard so i probably can't mix the two but i might create another separate leaderboard and have a bunch of people sign up on that if they're interested though again the leaderboard is based on timing and whatever and i'm just i'm going for completion on this but let's see what the first problem is my trouble is always the last problems like one of the problems last year took me like three and a half hours to solve it was really hard it involved like 3d graph structures but the first problem is always like a five minute problem and then i'm sort of just am out of stuff to do like there's no i i'm really excited it's the first day i want to do a lot of hard work and then it's immediately over um, also it occurs to me that this microphone setup is a little bit dumb insofar as it gets in between me and my keyboard but there's no time to fix that right now so we're just going to move our mouse over get our keyboard in the right spot and pray that this uh oh yeah just go to adventofcode.com and set up an account you absolutely can join no 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 problem there um and the accounts basically it just uh it's a way to make sure that you can get your own unique like input file oh yeah this is the perfect like it's one a day it starts out easier and then it gets harder which for me i'm using a language that i know and i'm using some like helper stuff that i set up from last year so for me uh it's gonna be like annoying and probably a little easy but um if you're trying to learn something new, like you want to learn Dart, or you want to learn Kotlin, or you want to learn Python, or it's been a while since you've coded, this is actually a great exercise. I think it's really good for that. Um, if I was not so busy, I would probably 
Actually, busyness is a, is a lame excuse. If I were just a better person who wanted to know more, then um, that's what I would do. Oh, okay, good to know. Uh, let me... Oh, gosh, it's so hard to... Is that better? Is that is the music less... less? 10% 10, 10 lower than this? Or are we good now? I know there's a little bit of a delay. Let's see if I even... Oh, okay, good. Perfect, perfect, perfect. I'm going to quit quit messing. All right, we got 43 seconds here. Anyways, it doesn't... This only matters if you like want to be really on time. I used to do competitive programming, so I'm trying with all of my soul right now to not try to instantly annihilate this and go at a speed that people can follow along. Um, but I'm going to tell you right now, my inclination is going to be shut up, read the problem, <laughs> and solve it immediately. And then I might come back and explain some stuff. We'll, we'll see what ends up happening. Um... Yeah, hard, a little a little hard to tell. Oh, it's always really nice actually because I get a lot of coworkers that uh, not only solve the problems but then do really cool visualizations, and maybe we can show off some of those later. Ah, eh, we'll we'll see. The problem is if I try and annihilate it, then you know maybe I'm not going to do so great. Here we go, and let me just scroll down to the bottom and uh, get my puzzle input, and we're just going to have to put that in right away. There we go. Okay, let's come back and read. Santa's reindeer typically eat regular reindeer food, but they need something about magical energy we gotta move over. A lot of magical energy to live Christmas presents on uh, Christmas. For that, their favorite snack is a special type of star fruit that only grows deep in the jungle. The elves have brought you on their annual expedition to the grove where the fruit grows. To supply enough magical energy, the expedition needs to retrieve a minimum of 50 stars by December 25th. Although the elves assure you that the grove has plenty of fruit, you decide to grab any fruit you see along the way, just in case. Collect stars by solving puzzles. Two puzzles will be made available on each day in the advent calendar. The second puzzle is unlocked when you complete the first. Each puzzle grants one star. Good luck! The jungle must be too overgrown and difficult to navigate in vehicles or access from the air. The elves' expedition traditionally goes on foot. As your boats approach land, the elves begin taking inventory of their supplies. One important consideration is food, in particular the number of calories each elf is carrying, your puzzle input. The elves take turn writing down the number of calories contained by the various meals, snacks, rations, etc. that they brought with them. One item per line. Each elf separates their own inventory from the previous elf's inventory, if any, by a blank line. For example, suppose the elves finish writing their item's calories and end up with the following list. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, blank, 4,000, blank, 5,000, 6,000, blank, 7, 8, 9, blank, 10. This list represents the calories of the food carries by the five elves. First one is calorie carrying 1, 2, and 3,000 calories, a total of 6,000. Second has 4,000. The third has 11,000. The fourth has 24,000. The fifth elf has 10,000. In case the elves get hungry and need extra snacks, they need to know which elf to ask. They'd like to know how many calories are being carried by the elf carrying the most calories. In the example above, this is 24,000 carried by the fourth elf. Find the elf carrying the most calories. How many total carry calories is that elf carrying? Okay, so let's go. So we want... Um, so we want to get the file, and then we want to get the scanner, and then we want... While the scanner has the next line, that's fine. We're going to put this, and we want uh, int uh, max calories, and that's actually what we're going to be printing out is uh, max calories is max calories. Uh, so this is going to be uh, uh, equals I don't know minus one or something. We should we can assume the numbers are positive. If I go look at the data, yes, some of these are. All of these are positive numbers, so we should be fine. Now we just have to pray that they don't add up too big, but I, th I think we'll be all right. So now, what do we want to do? Uh, string line equals scanner dot next line. Um, actually, it's while this, I think. Uh... There's some syntax for this. Uh, string line equals scanner dot next line. While next line uh, uh, not equal this or something like that. And then, um, sorry, not next line. It's while line does not equal that. Uh, int. Uh, uh, and we want calories so far. Uh, calories so far equals zero. Uh, Got to make that an int. Uh, int calories equals integer dot parse int line. 
calories so far uh, plus equals uh, calories. And then we want to make it so that the line increments in this. So we need line equals scanner dot next line. And then uh, we want max calories equals, uh, and then if max calories is greater, th uh, is less than calories so far, then we want it to be calories so far. Uh, sorry, this is a question mark, not a colon. Else we want it to be max calories. Uh, and then we want to print out the max calories. That looks about right. Let's try and run this and see if we've run into any issues here. And there's almost certainly some kind of build error. Yeah, uh, no line found. So that's probably because we're getting to the end of our data and there's no new line here. So let's try that and see whether or not it solves our problem. We can just fix it by fixing the input rather than uh, actually changing anything. And are we still running into issues? Uh, level one, line 22. Uh, oh, and did we not save this? Is that the problem? Mm, okay, and we can always uh, attach a debugger. Let's try that. Let's attach a debugger here. And let's, uh, this is gonna try, and then uh, actually, rather than trying and catching a file not found exception, why don't we just catch an exception? Uh, and then uh, debug to this point and see uh, if we can figure out which line we're on. Hmm. Mm, nope. Okay. So let's uh, attach a debugger here uh, and see what we find. Uh, stop and rerun. So scanner, next line, and just play it to the next. And it's still going, max calories and calories so far. So let's step down, see what we're seeing. Aha, uh -huh. so this looks like it's working. Now, is it gonna be null? So let's see, uh, 3319. Let's go back to the top and see what's going on here. 3319, so we need to get to like the 12th time this happens. So uh, let's go to here. There, 3264. What number are we looking for? 2233. So do again. You can, you can, you can do it. 3264. Why are we? What's going on? Okay, let's let's stop and rerun here. We moved to the, the debug point. It might be mad about that. Um. Oh, that's rerun main. Well, no wonder. So here, what we're looking for a line is 2233, so we're here. So let's step down, calories, scanner, next line. And so now line is that, so it jumps out and it does update our max calories, which is 4,000 something. And so now let's try and see, what are we looking for? Uh, 1020, okay, that's, and that's gonna be a couple thousand lines in, so we're probably not gonna wait for that. Um, and really, and if I just put one of these, um, uh, we can probably actually, um, if scanner has next line, we'll do this. Otherwise, we'll just uh, make line equal to that. Uh, that, which I think we could probably actually just call break there, actually. Okay. That should be better. We probably don't need to debug it. Let's go ahead and run. See whether or not it solves our problem. 72070. That's right, we get a gold star on to point two. Wonderful. Uh, by the time you calculate the answer to the elves question, they've already realized that the elf carrying the most calories of food might eventually run out of snacks. To avoid this unacceptable situation, they would instead like to know the total calories carried by the top three elves carrying the most calories. That way, if even one of these elves runs out of snacks, they still have two backups. Uh, in the example above, the top three elves uh, are the fourth elf, the third elf, and the fifth elf. The sum of the calories carried by these three elves is 45,000. Find the top three elves carrying their calories. How many calories are those elves carrying in total? Okay, um, let me see if I can find a Java heap implementation. Uh, Java heap implementation. 
and I want a max heap in Java. Is there a, is there a class for this? Because I, I, it would be a lot easier to, yeah, the reindeer should just eat the elves. Fair enough. Okay, so let's, so all this is more or less right, and we just need to store more data in the interim. Um, so let's go ahead and just put this in here. And then rather than max calories, we need like a max, a max calorie list. Um, we need like a little, do we want it to be a class? Um... trying to think of like what the this is like such a small number of things that i'm trying to think of what the easiest way to brute force it is rather than making something that's like really clean and going to solve the actual thing uh, i can just like store three numbers and then if it's bigger than any of the numbers then we find the one with the maximum difference which is greater than zero um i could also like store the three numbers in order um which is kind of like a little uh Kind of like a little linked list. That feels like overkill, though. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Java. Um, class. Is there a heap in Java? You can use a priority queue as a heap. Uh, to keep the min elements always on top. Um, oh, wonderful. Yeah, so let's use that. Let's use a priority queue. Um, we're going to have to... Yeah, priority queue. Let's... Hello, how are you doing? Good, can you ask? No? Okay. <laughs> Night. Thanks. Thank you. You too. Um, okay, so instead of int max calories, we're actually just going to do uh, priority queue. Uh, integer uh, heap equals new priority queue. And it doesn't actually matter. We're just always going to insert and then we're always going to remove the minimum, um, which should be fine. Okay. Um, yeah, we don't have to worry about being a min heap. We want it to be a min heap because we want to remove the minimum. And so then priority queue, what do we want? So let's see. Now, instead of like this line, we can delete that and we can say uh, heap dot add uh, calories so far. If heap dot size, actually let's do well. Uh, it should be if uh, greater than three uh, heap dot remove what do we what's the what's the way to see that see the, the single instance of the specified element but how do I how do I peek at what the minimum is how do I see what the minimum balance is uh, priority queue blah 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 blah, blah. Oh. oh, just just remove. So we just do nothing, uh, and this should be heap dot remove, and we just want to do that three times. So in total equals um, top three calories. Let's name things well. Equals uh, heap dot remove plus heap dot remove plus heap. Uh, heap dot remove. Let's make this actually check for a file not found exception rather than all exceptions. Um, and then we'll just say if uh, heap dot size greater than zero, throw new runtime exception. Um, he still has uh, heap dot size uh, plus elements. There we go. That seems fine. And then we just want to print out top three calories. Top three 
calorie total. Calorie is still IE. Um, and so rather than doing this here, we'll just print out top three calories. That seems like it should be fine. So let's make this part two and click play. Top three calories, 211.805. And if we plug that in over here, hey, that's the right answer. You're awarded one gold star closer to collecting enough star fruit. You've completed day one. You can share this victory or return to your advent calendar. And let's actually go to our leaderboard. Uh, so the full leaderboard, the same person got number one on the first two problems. Uh, and I don't think we're anywhere on this list because the leaderboard's completely full of stuff and we went pretty slow. If I go to my personal stats, yeah, I finished about 4,000th on the first one and about 5,000th on the second one because I was going slow and explaining things as I went. Um, but if we look at our private leaderboard and we view the one that we're on, um, we're just we're just getting beat beat out by Brian Kendall, uh, a good person from work. Oh, and they they uh, they do the support of the thing, which I should probably also do. Um, but I'll look into that a little bit later. So uh, let's go ahead and this this was a short one. Let's go ahead and do the other things that are normally good for us to do. So if we go back to this and we grab all of this. Um, and let's go into the problem statement now and see whether or not we can should actually full screen this so we can even pull this over just a little bit and see whether or not this looks good. And I remember we want to do something like this. And then there we go. So now this is showing up the same way it would have otherwise. Everything above that seems fine. And these, I think we want to do individual things around. In fact, maybe that's something we'll do if we get bored on another day, is make something that uh, take, takes and reformats a readme file, because um, doing this is super tedious, and for some of the more complicated examples, it becomes really, really tedious. Um, but I like it when the numbers show up right. Um, <laughs> I can't help that. Yeah, a nice little little 15 minute exercise. You can see what I mean about the fact that uh, it doesn't, um, like, it's not enough to chew on. Like, it'd be nice to have, like, an hour-long little exercise. Uh, my answer was this, which was correct. Part two. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, and we need to uh, include an extra space here. And we probably need to do that at the top as well. Oh, yeah. So much better. Already blah, 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 blah. In the example, 24,000 is a number. Or just watching me format some code. But honestly, we're just here to chill, you know? Um, <laughs> plenty to chew on for you. Fair, fair enough. Um, yeah, and I should probably go through. In fact, uh, give me a moment. Oh, yes. Wonderful. Uh, this all seems great. Let's go ahead and go to uh, Git. We're going to commit this. Um, problem one in the books. Um, so let's go ahead and commit that. Analyzing, there are some warnings. Um, don't care, commit it anyways. And we can push this in a second. Let's make another little commit. Let's go back and let's uh, comment some things. So we already know what the problem statement is. Um, so we grab, the, grab a line um, and then uh, great over a single, uh, what are they, elves? Is that right? Uh, blah, blah, blah. Yes, elf. Elves. Uh, calories and some. Um, uh, um, is either current maximum or current elf. Is either previous maximum or current elf. Um, uh, and we actually don't even need to, to comment printing the solution. And for this one, um, use, use priority queue as, oh man, this music is loud. Um, use priority queue as min heap. Um, only want the top three uh, values at any given moment. So remove the smallest, which is the default. Actually, let's talk about the default compared to where we initially 
initialize it. This is the default implementation of a priority queue on integers. So no need to use a custom comparator. And, uh, oh, we even need to get rid of, rid of this. Gross. Uh, And that's this this thing should be the same here iterative of single helps calories and sum should be the same thing here uh elf to min keep uh, check if i screwed up and there are more than three values remaining Easy, look at how nice that is. Let's go ahead and do another little commit here. Um, add some documentation to the code. A little smiley face, commit and push. I'm just gonna warn and I do not care. Uh, let's go ahead and push that. So you guys can go ahead and uh, find the code here at this GitHub. Uh, you can see last year's work and uh, this year's work. And you can also see um, Advent of code here. If this is something you want to try out, you can find the link there. Uh, that should absolutely work for you. Uh, and if you're watching, if, you know, if I did this later and this is on YouTube, uh, which it probably won't be, but if it is, I will have posted some links in the description or a comment or something. Goodness only knows. So let's take a moment and let's read back through the problem. Um, and one more time, just reiterate what the solution that we did was and uh, why it's working. And I'm gonna check the sound levels before they do this because I'm really concerned that this is going to be, uh, that the music's gonna be too loud and this will be unusable and I'm gonna have to do it again. So give me one second here. Okay, the music is slightly louder than I want it to be. So I'm just gonna turn it down a little bit more. It was fine for while we were figuring stuff out, but hopefully that four decibels has solved the problem for me. Maybe, maybe not. We'll find out. Okay, so the problem statement. Um, let's use the problem statement from the code itself. So the problem statement is that there are a bunch of elves, and they're carrying stuff that has calories because they're trying to make it across the frozen wilderness or something. I don't know. So we can see how many calories they have one, uh, by looking at each group. So the first elf has 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 for they have three snacks. The next one has this one. The next one has this one, etc. And then we need to know which elf has the most calories. So what my thing, uh, what my solution does in the first time is it reads lines, uh, and every time it parses it as an integer and adds it to the current sum. And then when it finds a line break, it's uh, it takes that sum and compares it to the maximum sound so far. So here it would go 1,000, and then add 2,000, so I have 3,000, and then add 3,000, so I have 6,000. And then it hits a line break, so it stops, and it says, okay, what is my old maximum, and what is the current value I have? And we initialize it as minus one. So if we go over here and we look and we move these things over, um, we initialize our maximum as minus one here, we can see. So uh, 6,000 is greater than minus one. So it says, okay, my, my current max calories is 6,000. And then it goes to the next elf and it says, okay, 4,000. And then it finds a blank line. And it says, okay, well, the current sum is 4,000. And the max calories we have is 6,000 from this first one. So we're gonna keep 6,000. And it keeps going uh, as such until it gets down to the bottom. And then it says, okay, what is my current maximum? Print that out. And the answer for our set of inputs, which we have from this really long list of numbers, is 72,070. And that turned out to be correct. So for part two, we want to know the top three and add them. And there are several different ways to do this. Uh, in theory, you could just keep three numbers, keep them in order, and then do a little bit of like bit fiddling, just sort of like insert one and move some stuff down. Um, in fact, you could create like an array with four members and then insert stuff and then uh, Whenever your array is fully full, you can just sort it and then take the take the first value and remove it if you wanted to. That would be totally fine. The other thing that you could do is you could just insert everything into an array, sort it, and then uh, get the last value. But it's actually a lot easier to do the comparisons on only the three biggest that you've seen so far. So instead, what we did is we used what's called a min heap. So the way the min heap works is basically you have this data structure where you can put a bunch of numbers in. And then you could say, hey, can you give me the minimum one and, and take it out, please? Uh, and that happens really fast in that data structure. And because we're only storing the, the three maximum that we've seen so far, finding the minimum from that data structure is really, really fast. So what we do is we go through and similar to here, we go, okay, one, two, 3,000, and we adds up to 6,000. We put it in our min heap. The min heap goes, okay, well, I have, I have zero elements. I add in one element. One is less than three because we only want the top three. So we're not going to do anything. 
So then we had 4,000. We have 4,000 and 6,000 in there. Okay, that's that's fine. We still haven't reached uh, three elements, so we just keep going. And now we have 11,000. We've reached three elements. That's all right. Three, th three elements is less than or equal to three elements, so we're all right. And then we get to this one, which is, I think, uh, 4,000? Is that right? 24,000, and we insert that. And then we say, hey, Heap, how many elements do you have? And it says four. And I say, ooh, four is more than three. Please remove elements until you get back down to three. And it says, okay, well, the first one I'm going to remove is the smallest, which is exactly what we want because we only care about the three biggest. And then we say, okay, the smallest is 4,000. So now we have 6,000, 11,000, and 24,000. And then we insert 10,000. And the Heap says, oh, I have four elements. And I say, cool, please take out one until you have three again. And then uh, it takes out, what would it take out? 6,000 in this case. So now we have 11,000, 10,000, and uh, 24,000. And then we've run out of elements here. So then what we do is we say, oh, hey, Heap, can you give me the three values that you have remaining? So we just remove those three elements. The Heap should be empty. So we check that and we say, hey, Heap, are you empty? Because if the Heap's not empty, then we have more than three in there for some reason. This check is unnecessary, but I did it because I'm a human who's likely to write a bug. And if I just throw something here, it's way easier than trying to figure out whether or not I was wrong because I had too many elements in my heap at the end or whether or not because I had the wrong elements in my heap at the end. And so then once we've added those three elements up and there's nothing left in our heap, we know everything's probably fine. We print out the total, we put it in, everything's hunky-dory. So easy peasy, lemon squeezy. First one is in the books. Uh, again, you can find my GitHub uh, in chat or, or down in the description. And you can find, uh, if you'd like to follow along and set some stuff up, I'm not actually gonna go through a whole bunch of details about how I set these things up. You can just look it up and we'll solve the problems together. Um, and you're also welcome to go do Advent of Code if some people ask me to. Um, I will happily make a leaderboard that you can join and we can do this for the rest of the month together. If nobody has anything else, I think I'm probably just gonna call it there because uh, I got some other stuff that I need to do tonight. Um, but I'm happy to have done this day one. I'll be back every single day that I can to be able to, to do the next problems. And uh, if we go back to the advent of code calendar, you can see that uh, one of the lines here that was at symbols and hatch and hatch symbols and everything has now actually turned into a bunch of tildes. So over the course of the year, this is gonna turn into a, uh, a, a big drawing. So the more weeks we do in a row, the more stars we're gonna get, which is feel, gonna feel good. The more our leaderboard is gonna feel up, fill up, which is gonna feel good. And the more of this like really cool drawing is gonna show up. Uh, different years have different drawings. Oh, and let's just check our little private leaderboard once again. Um, yeah, and it looks like, so far, the only two people are me and Brian Kendall, which is totally fine. The, um, I know I have a coworker in chat. Uh, coworker, if you are looking for this, if you go to the internal, like, space we have, and you go to the space details, it says join our leaderboard if you want. If you felt like joining, that would register you there. And it is retroactive. It used timestamps. So feel free to uh, go to the go to the description of the Advent of Code 2022 chat space where we basically where we talked about stuff. Oh. <laughs> and I now just realized <laughs> my coworkers have been talking about me this entire time in the chat. They just said Malcolm found a way to beat all of us. Stream it so that we're watching instead of solving. <laughs> oh man. Um, and. Uh, one of the more like technically savvy coworkers that I have is in the middle of ADR Jam Week. I'm not sure what that is. Let's find out what that is together. ADR Jam Week. Um, alternative dispute resolution. There's there's no way that's right. I've no I've no clue what's going on there. Um, yeah, some of my coworkers aren't starting until tomorrow morning. Um, Oh, and they have like a a riddle advent calendar. That's very cool. All right. Oh, it's Android DevRel. Very cool. Um, that makes way more sense. All right. Well, I think we're going to sign off for the night. Um, I'm so used to streaming for hours at a time playing chess, and I could do that, but I'm going to I'm gonna <laughs> I have to record a chess video to publish on my YouTube tomorrow. Um, for those of you that for those of you that like chess, I'll use this as an opportunity to uh, to plug that YouTube channel that I have there. And I'm probably going to make a separate YouTube channel for some coding stuff because uh, if if I know one thing, it's that Google Staff Sui solves coding challenges <laughs> is um, should be like a huge. Uh, if I wanted to chase views, that would be the easiest way to do it with the skill set that I have. But you know, if you like chess, go check that out. Anyways, I hope everybody has a wonderful evening. It's been very lovely to sit here and uh, do this with you. And I will see you tomorrow at 9 p.m. Pacific time to do this all over again.
Have a great evening, folks.